Hey there everybody, it's Mike Delisio. Today I'm gonna to be taking a look at the new expansion for Root called the Clockwork Expansion by Benjamin Schmaus. This expansion adds some automated opponent, some bot opponents that you can either use in a solo game or in a low player count game. So we'll head over the table, I'll give you a little bit of an overview on how these bots work, what they add to the game, then we'll come back here and I'll give you my final thoughts. Okay, for the purposes of the overview on the Clockwork expansion, I'm not going to be going into any real level of detail. I really just want to show you the faction boards, give you a little bit of an idea on how things change. There are obviously going to be rules that are specific to playing with bots. There's a whole root or a law, excuse me, a law of root botics book that comes with the expansion that really talks about how you have to account for playing with bots, whether it's solo or in a lower player count game uh, that are going to determine different elements that you have to account for. Number one is you first will see on this board, I've got a number of clearing markers. These are priority markers. And depending on the type of map, they're going to have a, a, a setup for it. And so this you see the setup for the standard fall map here. And what these priority markers are really going to do is help you determine if you have to um, determine where a particular automated faction is going to either be moving or going to be uh, uh, battling in, these priority markers are going to help you do that because you're going to be getting um, certain instructions that are, are going to tell you to, to focus on a particular clearing and these priority markers are going to help you do that. So, um, first of all, once you've done that, you're going to figure out the difficulty that you want to play the game as. And so depending on what difficulty, it may change things up. And so, for example, if you're playing against the Mechanical Marquee, you've got some cards that you can look at here. If you're playing in easy, it's going to adjust things. When you recruit, instead place only two warriors. When, and it says when you, it means when the bot does. When you recruit, also place two warriors in the order clearing you rule of highest priority. And that's what these priority markers means. Highest priority would actually be the lower numbers. And then nightmare, whenever you recruit, uh, also place two warriors in the order clearing you rule of highest priority at the end of evening, score a victory point. So you can see these cards are going to change how the, how the uh, difficulty works for the particular faction. You've also got what are called trait cards that you can add. And, and you, the more of these you add, it's going to make it more difficult for you. So you can have different ways that you can change up the difficulty and the way that these different factions work. And they're there for all of the different factions along with the difficulty cards for each. All right. So that's one thing you have to account for is how difficult do you want to make the game. And this allows you to, to kind of work on that. Okay, so let's just look quickly at the boards. Now, first of all, this was the original Mechanical Marquis board that came with the uh, River Folk expansion. And so this was you, before the only way that you could play uh, Root with a bot. And it was pretty complicated. It was a little, well, I don't want to say a little. It was difficult to administer. It was uh, something that really was only good, in my opinion, as a way to learn the new factions that you were trying to learn. So here are the new faction boards. Here's the new Mechanical Marquee 2.0. And you can see that it gives you very much the information that you would expect if you were playing as this character. It has all of their specific information here about the keep, their poor manual dexterity, which actually all of the bots have poor manual dexterity, which basically means they don't have cards. Uh, you don't have a hand of cards if you are a bot. You don't discard cards if you're a bot. If a human would take a card, uh, from you, they draw a card instead, and if a human would give a card to you, they discard it and you score a point. So what's interesting, what you have to kind of get used to is that when you're reading the bot's boards, it'll say you, 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 but it's referring to you, the bot, okay? Because you are administering the bot, so you keep that in mind as well. So they have their birdsong, daylight, evening, uh, just like a, uh, a human player would, 
and the the marquee uh, actually have this elevate or escalated daylight that might happen if your order card is a bird card. So if your order card is a bird, instead of doing this daylight action, you do the escalated daylight action. Um, and I'm, again, I'm not going to go into tremendous detail on these. This is the automated alliance, the Woodland Alliance. They've got their automated outrage, their automated ambush, and just like always, the poor manual dexterity with their birdsong daylight and evening as per normal. Actually, let me save that. Here's the Vagabot. The Vagabot is a little bit more challenging to administer. There's a, a bit more going on. And so this one I think is the most challenging to run as a human player to kind of administer it. But the Vagabond character plays so differently uh, from the standard characters, even in a regular multiplayer game, that it makes sense that it's going to be a little bit trickier. But I think it's great that they actually were able to pull off a Vagabot um, character. Now here's the Electric Eerie, and the reason why I saved this one for last is that although everything on it is similar to the other ones where it's got its special uh, powers along with the poor manual dexterity like they all have and birdsong, daylight, and evening, unfortunately there's already an errata for this. There is uh, an exploit that has been figured out early on that can lead to some kind of endless loops and some uh, unsatisfying games when playing against the Electric Eerie. And so basically this first part here, the resolving the decree, has been changed. Now you're going to recruit for all four columns from left to right, then move for all four columns, and then battle for all, for, uh, all four columns from left to right. And so this is something that uh, you can get a sticker to put over it. I do also believe that they're going to be making uh, new boards in upcoming uh, potentially expansions, maybe on their web store. I'm not sure about that. But I did want to point out that there is already an errata for the Electric Eerie that you should um, make sure that you are aware of if you do get this expansion and play with the bird bot. So that was just what I wanted to show you, just a general overview of what these bots look like, what the priority markers look like, and now let's head over and I'll give you my final thoughts. Okay, so hopefully that gives you a little bit of an idea on how the bots change things up in root from the Clockwork expansion. Uh, the first thing I wanted to mention about this is that there was already one automated opponent that came in the first expansion for Root called the Riverfolk expansion, and that was the Mechanical Marquee. You can only have that one character as a potential opponent. And I had stated at the time of the release of that particular expansion that while I appreciated being able to play Root against a bot opponent, it wasn't a terribly satisfying experience. It really, all that I found it to be particularly useful for was to learn new factions because then I could have kind of this bot just so I can work out the mechanics of how the new uh, faction that I was trying to learn would work against and I wouldn't have to try to get a gr game group together and that's a little bit more of a, of a production but when you have a bot you can just kind of work through the mechanics of, of a new faction and I liked it for that reason but really for nothing else. I was not recommending Root as a solo game based off of the Mechanical Marquee. Well, what happens is on Board Game Geek, I believe is where it started, you had what came to be known as the Better Bot program or, or series. And it was basically these updated versions of bot automated bot opponents for Root. And uh, Benjamin Schmaus, who uh, developed this, was brought on by Leader Games and and help develop these bots into uh, really the product that we have here before us. And, and it's, a, it's a huge difference. I mean, there's, there's, there's really almost no comparison between the original Mechanical Marquee and these new bots that are, are here for Root. They uh, are so much more nimble. They are so much more easy to uh, administer and, and manage. Now, I will say that some of the bots are easier to manage than others. Uh, the, the Vagabot has quite a bit going on and it takes a while to, to kind of wrap your heads, to wrap your head around uh, how it works and, and, and how it manages all of its functions. But generally speaking, they all are manageable, uh, not terribly difficult to administer, and it, it's a game changer for me in either a solo game for Root or a small player count game for Root. 
One of the issues when you're playing Root the, the, uh, without the bots is that because of the different faction asymmetric uh, nature, they've had what they've called reach values, where basically there are suggest suggested matchups based on player count. And if you're playing with just two players or even sometimes three players, and you don't have a bot opponent, you're limited by which factions are really viably uh, available to you. I mean, you could play with any faction you want, you're just not guaranteed to get a very balanced experience. And some factions will be more powerful than others based on which factions are involved in the game. And so by adding these bots in, in a two player game, well, first in a solo player game, and you can play with multiple bots if you choose, in a, in a solo player game, two player or even three player game, it really opens up the possibilities available to you to be able to have access to some of the uh, factions that you maybe wouldn't have otherwise. And so uh, I really do appreciate what these bots can bring to lower player count games. Now, I still have to state that I think Root is at its best as a design in a probably four player human game session. I mean, the best games of Root I've had have been four players around a table, kind of getting in each other's heads, working through how these different factions uh, work. And, and I've had just some amazing experience that way. That being said, I've also had some really satisfying solo games of Root using these clockwork bots. And so uh, I really do appreciate that now I've got options that I didn't have before. And I, I think for that reason, that the clockwork expansion is something that if you're going to play, certainly if you're going to play solo, but even if you're going to play, I would say even half the time with a two to three player count, it's absolutely something you should consider getting because it just opens up your uh, possibility so much more. It, it opens up the types of factions that you can have competing in that game. And so I think that the clockwork expansion is one that if you're playing at lower player counts is, is almost essential to be able to have the full, well, as close to a full root experience as you can get. And that's going to vary based on, uh, on your play style, of course. But for me, if I'm playing solo or with a uh, low player count, I'm never, you know, I wouldn't even consider at this point playing with the original mechanical marquee. That's been completely replaced in my mind by these uh, clockwork expansion bots. So that being said, I think this is a terrific expansion. Uh, I really appreciate that this came really as a grassroots beginning. It came from somebody wanting, well, from a number of people from what I understand. I don't know all the etymology of how it began, but from people looking to have a better solo or low player count experience. And I think it's great that Leader uh, came with this, helped develop it, put it into the product that we see uh, with us here today. Uh, I think that for this expansion, just based on its own merits, I would certainly give it a, a seal of uh, approval. I'm rating this a 7.5. If you're playing it primarily solo, it might even be more essential than that, but uh, I'm just gonna take it as a whole, as, a, uh, as an expansion. 7.5, seal of approval. Thank you so much for your time as always, and have a great day.